I think everyone should know at least one impressive cocktail to make for guests when they come over. So here's a short list that varies depending on how many ingredients you need and how hard they might be to find. Penicillin is an all-time favorite of mine, but its constituent ingredients are both expensive and hard to source. First, you have to make a ginger honey syrup. Combine equal parts honey and water in a saucepan to dissolve, along with a few three-inch slices of fresh ginger. Simmer everything for five minutes to infuse, then strain it, chill it, and keep it in the fridge. To make the actual cocktail, combine two ounces of blended scotch, three quarters of an ounce of fresh lemon juice, and three quarters of an ounce of that honey ginger syrup in a cup with ice. Shake everything vigorously to combine, aerate, and dilute, and then strain it into a glass of fresh ice and top the whole thing with a quarter ounce float of Laphroaig. A piece of candied ginger is a really common garnish, but as you can see by my makeshift shaker cup and uh, multi-purpose strainer, I'm not one to own many dedicated bar tools like bar spoons and metal cocktail picks. Make sure that anybody that you serve this to is open to aggressive flavors. My recycle bin is like 10% Prince of Peace ginger chew wrappers and 20% emptied bags of garden soil, so obviously I love it. And I encourage you to try it if you ever get the chance. It's like hyper pop or polar plunges. The challenge is half the fun. I make this next cocktail for house guests really frequently, but that's because I've got a box of butterfly pea flower tea in my pantry. This deeply tinted flower turns the tea bluer than Violet Beauregard in an Eiffel 65 show. Combine four ounces of lemonade with two ounces of gin in a glass with ice. If you don't like or have gin, use vodka with a botanical flavor to it like this lavender one. Float two ounces of butterfly pea flower tea on top and garnish with mint and or lemon. At its core, this is just liquor and lemonade, but the blue on top slowly mixes down to make a pale purple gradient, and that slow transformation plus all this herbal plumage comes together as something quite special. This next cocktail called the Mr. Bally High is more accessible as long as you can find coffee liqueur and pineapple juice. The fun comes from gathering people together to see their faces the exact moment that they learn how well coffee and pineapple go together, like an after dinner espresso and dessert all in one. Shake together one and a half ounces of dark rum, one and a half ounces of pineapple juice, one ounce of light rum, one ounce of fresh lemon juice, three quarters of an ounce of coffee liqueur, and half an ounce of simple syrup. Strain this into a cup, but if you own a tiki mug, this is the perfect excuse to dust it off. My favorite thing about presenting this as an entry-level cocktail is that to be 100% authentic, you should actually serve it in this specific cup that's made to look like the actual statue after which the drink is named. And even though it's good to understand context and history, the drink is, of course, just as delicious in a regular glass. Just like with food, you'll encounter the old authenticity issue a lot in cocktail world. Did you know that Gosling's owns the right to the name Dark and Stormy and will thus try to sue you for publishing a Dark and Stormy recipe that doesn't explicitly list their brand of rum as an ingredient, even though the original recipe likely employed the Demerara or Blackstrap rum that Royal Navy soldiers in that era were rationed? I hesitate to use Twittery language like gatekeeping here, but I will just say that making alcoholic beverages is great practice in the art of learning little tidbits and factoids without imposing a bunch of hard rules on the things that other people make. This last recipe is for anyone who's watched all the previous ones and thought, okay, but make it easier and more flexible and large format so I only have to make one big bowl of punch all night. I don't know why punch is still so criminally underrated these days, but if you need a customizable punch template, use this one that Vice calls tarragon in 60 seconds. It's a mix of juice, brandy, rum, prosecco, and tarragon. This recipe isn't even very well written. There's an error here that says grapefruit instead of grape juice, but I chose it for this list because of how forgiving it is towards substitutions. The tangerine juice can be subbed for OJ. You might think that the name implies that tarragon is of critical importance, but any savory herb works. This Thai basil will mimic the licorice notes of tarragon, so would fennel fronds. You could use rosemary or oregano. Your job is to understand each ingredient's purpose, like the Prosecco's job of adding effervescence, and mix accordingly. The point of learning one good punch is practicing that balance of acid from citrus, alcohol from liquor, sweetness from juice, and standout flavor compounds from stuff like fresh herbs. You can garnish a large format punch to look just as pretty as a single serving cocktail, but you do wanna be mindful of dilution. You should only use cold ingredients and serve the punch with the biggest chunk of ice possible because little pellets or cubes will melt way too fast. These were just a few suggestions, but do not forget about the points I also made in the Amaro video or the Milk Punch video. In fact, you won't have to worry very much about small talk at a cocktail party if you can tell your guests that the beverage they're sipping on actually sat in a nest of curdled milk all day. Just to find a more palatable way to say that.
Nobody has paid to be mentioned at the end of this video. I'm taking this moment at the end of the year to coerce you into actually visiting internetshaquille.com for what is probably your first time. It's just a small collection of links, but it's where you can find all of my less refined, off the cuff experimental work. T-shirts for sale, a ton of bonus Patreon videos. I'm giving away custom made packets of seeds to people who join within the next month text-based blog posts, Instagram. There was a period in which I was letting people call into a live advice show, which was a real hoot. All that good stuff is flying quietly under the radar at internetshaquille.com. I hope to see you there.